Welcome to Bloomberg Law. I'm Lee Pacquia. We're joined today by Kevin Pawlowski, partner at Shepard Mullen. He represents Abacus Federal Savings Bank of New York's Chinatown, which was recently indicted for mortgage fraud by the Manhattan District Attorney in May. It's one of the very few banks nationwide to face criminal charges since the 2008 housing meltdown. Kevin, thanks for coming in. Welcome. My pleasure. So, uh, as you know, the indictment alleges that the bank and its employees uh, instructed borrowers essentially to lie on their loan applications uh, so that the loans could be granted and then ultimately sold to Fannie Mae. Uh, eight of your client's former employees uh, have pleaded guilty, and another 11 are uh, charged in the scheme, including the bank's chief credit officer. What is the bank's defense? Well, Lee, this is a very strange uh, and, uh, and in, we believe, unjust prosecution, and that there are some very fundamental facts, facts that did not come out during the, the district attorneys, either in the indictment or in the district attorneys' uh, media blitz that followed the, the indictment. First and foremost, uh, the misconduct at issue, uh, it's important that the public understand, was discovered, stopped, uh, and investigated uh, by the, sen the bank's own senior management mm -hmm. um, more than two and a half years ago. Uh, this was a, it, it started with a suspicious real estate closing that the senior managers of the bank uh, didn't like kind of something that was happening. They shut it down even though no one else wanted, you know, everyone else wanted the, wanted the loan to go forward. They shut it down, began an internal investigation, fired the employee involved, um, and, and the, that investigation is what, is what led to this case. The, the bank itself uh, investigated this, spending a, a great deal of its own resources, more than a million dollars to to uh, to investigate this. Uh, Self-reported it to their regulator, mm -hmm. to law enforcement. And Which to regulator Fannie was Mae. it reported to? Uh, OTS was the was the regulator. Um, when did they make the report? Uh, the report to the to law enforcement occurred in, in, in within weeks of the the this this suspicious. Uh, Real estate closing uh, to the regulator was within a month or so thereafter, um, as and as additional facts were learned, um, those re those were those facts were reported. Empl additional employees were, were were terminated. Ironically, the same employees who are now the cooperating witnesses uh, for the district district attorney are the employees that were discovered uh, and were were terminated by the bank in many cases. Hmm. How many allegedly fraudulent loans uh, were originated by Abacus Bank? How many are we talking about here? We don't frankly know because the indictment uh, is is uh, very very vague on this point. The indictment specifies 27 loans uh, as supposedly being being. Uh, fraudulent. Uh, this is out of a grand total of thousands and thousands of loans that were issued during this time period. Uh, and, and it kind of leads us to uh, another one of the kind of the fundamental facts that make this, this prosecution so bizarre. Um, and that is that the, the bank's default rate is absolutely tiny. You'd be hard pressed to find a bank with a default rate as, as low as Abacus's. And it's been low year after year after year. Um, these are loans that perform where the, the, the loans have been issued and the borrowers pay their, pay their mortgage on time month after month after month. Mm -hmm. The bank's default rate is one-tenth the national average, um, approximately, you know, half of 1%. Uh, and the supposed victim in this case, Fannie Mae, actually made a profit, not a loss, a profit mm. of, of more than $125 million during the time period alleged in the indictment. Right, but some would say, look, rules are rules, fraud is fraud. They committed um, liar's loans. They, they went about this the wrong way. Uh, why should the, the lack of uh, meaningful defaults among these loans matter at the end of the day? It's, this is not, this, it, we're not suggesting that, uh, that this is an, an issue of no harm, foot, no foul. What we're suggesting is, uh, number one, in terms of whether the bank itself is responsible uh, for, from a criminal perspective, um, we've got a situation with little or no defaults uh, consistently year after year after year. Um, I, I, in any mortgage fraud environment, the number one red flag will be defaults, and usually rapid defaults, usually within a couple of months. Um, that just did not happen here. Mm -hmm. So the senior management didn't, didn't, didn't catch the fact that there, were, there was anything going on, and frankly, neither did the OTS, neither did Fannie Mae, all of whom uh, were in the bank on a regular basis reviewing these very loan files. So the idea that the bank's senior management was somehow, you know, uh, is somehow criminally responsible uh, for, 
for misconduct by, by lower level employees and, and at the end of the day, uh, the level of misconduct is something that's going to be determined at trial. Mm -hmm. um, again, some of these employees were employees that were fired by, by the bank itself. Uh, others, uh, at, at the end of the day, a jury may well you know, decide, decide, decide their fate. But in terms of the bank itself, there were no red flags. Um, the, the regulator didn't catch this problem. Uh, Fannie Mae didn't catch this problem. Um, and it resulted in, in absolutely zero loss to Fannie Mae, to the taxpayer, or anybody else. Um, and at the end of the day, what we're su suggesting is that this really should have been a regulatory problem. Um, and it was. In 2009, according to the indictment, uh, bank senior executives sought an exemption from new regulations that would allow regulators to examine customers' tax returns. Why did they seek that exemption? Well, that, that's not quite right. The, the, uh, the, the bank sought an exemption with, res with respect to the submission of a form that would permit the bank to pull uh, a, a, tax, a tax return. Um, it is a, we're dealing with a small community bank um, in which the, the regulatory environment uh, that, it, uh, that it operates in uh, is already pretty significant. Um, and in light of the fact that this, this was a bank which had a, a default rate that year after year after year was one-tenth the national average or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was the view that an additional uh, paperwork uh, issue, and that's what this w was, uh, should, would not be appropriate uh, for this size bank in particular. Uh, and there was, it was an application made. That application was, was denied, and, and, uh, and here we are. But it, 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 never, um, it, it never came to pass, and there was nothing uh, either illegitimate or improper. Um, uh, the bank had every right to, to essentially ask for an exemption. Uh, it didn't get that exemption, and, and there, therefore it followed the rules once, once the rules changed. Mm. But also after they failed to get the exemption, uh, bank loan volume dropped something like 90 percent, according to the indictment. What explains that drop off other than fraudulent activity? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up, because the, if you look at the time periods, um, the new rule went into effect at the, end, at the end of 2009. The end of 2009 is, is exactly when the senior management discovered the, the misconduct at issue, um, and this internal investigation began. Um, so from essentially December 2009, which was the month that the, that the, the new rule went into effect, and it was also the month that, that the suspicious um, loan closing occurred, um, the bank has spent, uh, the, again, this is a small bank with a small senior management, and that the time of that senior management since really December 2009, January 2010, has been spent, um, you know, almost exclusively since that time, dealing with this issue, first with its regulator, then with Fannie Mae, uh, and now two and a half years later uh, mm. w with the DA's office. Mm. There are some that say that um, the DA is pursuing Abacus Bank, your client, uh, and making them a, a sacrificial lamb in the broader saga that is the aftermath of the housing crisis. Do you agree with that? Well, in terms of the intentions of, of Mr. Vance and, and his office, I'll leave that for others to question. But I will say this, the idea that, the, 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 that Abacus Bank uh, and this prosecution has anything to do with the financial crisis is a farce. Uh, during the course of the time period that's charged in th this indictment, um, not only did Fannie Mae not lose a dollar, uh, Fannie Mae actually made a profit of more than $120 million on Abacus's portfolio. Frankly, if, if every bank committed mortgage fraud the way that, that Mr. Vance has alleged Abacus Bank committed mortgage fraud, we wouldn't have had a financial crisis because Abacus's Lo uh, borrowers make their payments month after month after month, uh, essentially at a record scale. So any suggestion that this is somehow a lesson of the financial crisis is, is so far off base that, that it, it's just, it, it's, it, it's not even worth, worth responding to. Um, what the intentions are, um, again, you'll have to ask the, uh, the, the district attorney's office as to what their ten intentions are. Kevin, I want to thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thanks for having me. That's Kevin Povolowski from the law firm Shepard Mullen. If you'd like to learn more about the case and issues we just discussed, be sure to check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also on the Bloomberg Terminal. You can see more of our videos on YouTube and follow our updates on Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.